fellow ninjas. Welcome back to the dojo here at Code Wars. We're on to our next challenge entitled Compare with Margin. The instructions for this one read create a function close compare that accepts three parameters A, B, and an optional margin. The function should return whether A is lower than, close to, or higher than B. A is considered close to B if margin is higher than or equal to the difference between A and B. So you can kind of think of that margin as giving you some leeway where they're close enough. They're considered close enough to be equal. When A is lower than B, return negative 1. When A is higher than B, re return 1. And when A is close to B, return 0. If margin is not given, treat it as 0. So they give an example down here. Imagine A is 3, B is 5, and the margin is 3. Since A and B are no more than 3 apart, we see they're only 2 apart, close compare should return 0. Otherwise, if instead margin is equal to 0, A is lower than B, and close compare should return negative 1. I think that's pretty straightforward. They, give a, they tell us to assume that margin will be greater than or equal to 0. They note that some languages have optional parameters, and C-sharp is one of them. You can uh, notice here in the function signature, this last parameter has this equals sign with the value, and that is an optional parameter. Because it's optional, you use this equals and a value to denote the default value that should be used. So if someone's calling your close compare function, and they provide three arguments, margin will be set to whatever value they use. If they call your method using only two arguments, then you're going to, when you reference margin in your method, it's going to be set to zero. That's how that works. Default parameters always have to appear at the end. Um, consider from the compiler's perspective, you know, how it would know to make sense of the parameters if you allowed default parameters to appear anywhere. Imagine if you let them appear at the beginning, you wouldn't know which ones were, um, how many of them were optional parameters being used. So that's why when you see that, they'll always be at the end and you could have more than one. So that's fine. You can add commas and as long as you keep all the, the optional parameters at the end, you're fine. So we'll get on to it. One other thing to note, you may be wondering what the deal is with this comparison that allows a margin. And it doesn't really make so much sense when you consider integers. You know, you'd probably do a straight up comparison. But when you consider floating point numbers um, and like the doubles we used in the last challenge, you know, think um, you may, if you're checking for a particular value, do you really care if it's off by 0. 0.00001? Would you want your your check to fail in that case, a lot of times you wouldn't. You know, it's hard to match a, f uh, a floating point that's very precise with lots of uh, decimal point values. Um, it's hard to match those exactly. So you might want some kind of little margin, as they call here, a little window where you're gonna say, hey, that's close enough. That is what I'm looking for. So it's more useful in that case. And you can see in the test examples below, they, they eventually get into some, some decimal values here. So, okay, we'll go into it. Um, as usual, it'd be good to pause the video here and try this one yourself, and then just resume whenever you're ready. We'll go through it. I'm going to think of this in sort of uh, two situations where a and B are equal to each other, perhaps with the help of the margin, or they are not. So to start, I'm going to handle this case where they might uh, be equal to each other. So I could say, I'm going to grab the difference of A and B. And if you remember from the last video, we used the math class and its absolute value function. And this was nice, so it didn't really matter what order you do the subtraction in. So consider this first test with four and five. If I subtract them, I'm, you know, I could get a negative one if I do it in that order. Um, I, again, I'm not interested in the, the negative portion. I just want the magnitude. So I'm using absolute value here just to get that magnitude that I can compare against margin. 
So I could say if the difference between A and B, the magnitude of it, if that is less than or equal to margin, then return zero. That's what they told us to do, right? I know they said less than or equal in the instructions. And so that's going to say, hey, yeah, that's either, either A and B are a match, and it should be zero, or they're close enough, um, according to this margin value, to be considered equal. So return zero. That's common for comparison functions. Return zero. That denotes equal. So um, that works whether margin is specified or comes in at the default value of zero, where you're demanding actual equality. So th that covers this. So then after this, notice it's a return statement. So if this condition is met, we're out of the function. If we proceed lower, that means there's not a match. One of them is bigger, the other one's smaller. So to handle this, I'm going to use, you could use another if statement, but we're going to show the ternary operator, as it's called. So I could say if A is less than B, I'm sorry, return negative 1. Uh, if that case is not true, then I want to return 1. That means A is greater than B. We already handled the situation where they're different. And so this is a nice compact format for writing that. If this looks funny to you, you know, look up the ternary operator. It's very handy. But you could think of it, I'll, I'll write out a if statement to kind of show what this is equivalent to. It's kind of like saying, imagine we made an answer variable, we'll just call it zero to start. And then if we said if A is less than B, answer equals negative one, else answer equals one return answer now I think you would agree that this is a nice this is a lot nicer to look at it's less typing once you've used enough of them they're very clear in their intent so yeah most of us prefer would prefer greatly to write it out like this than all of this but if you're curious what that means it would look just like a conditional statement there so I'll get rid of that. And then, yeah, I think this covers all cases. I'm going to have to bring in that math library that we referenced for absolute value. Do you remember what the library was for that? That math is contained in the math class. We say using system, very good. And there's no sort of magic about this you just learn these as you use them you know you remember where they're at and if you don't you can just look them up like before with google search you would put c sharp math class and then on its um doc page we looked at that before you can see system see the namespace here system so i know i need to use system to get access to this class it's it resides in the system namespace so, yeah, you can always look those up if you're not sure. But it takes time, you know, you're going to have to scan through the system class to see what's available to you. That just is part of learning. And then I think we're good. We'll try running their tests on this, see what we get. looks good basic tests all pass and then finally i'll run the attempt on the larger collection and it looks good there so i think we're safe to submit this solution i'll go ahead and do that good they're showing some other people's solutions here, you know. This guy, these people went for the if-else approach. It's fine. Some other guy did a, or 
Lady Kartoffels a lot. That's German for potato salad. That's a pretty cool name. Uh, they did a one-liner there. Those are kind of fun. So, yeah, feel free to peek through those too. Otherwise, yeah, I think that should wrap this one up. Hit me up with questions. Otherwise, we will proceed to the next challenge. Thanks for watching.